It's always difficult to know how to start a show, isn't it? So let's get a few tips on how to start our show from the people at Microsoft. Hello and welcome to Microsoft Ignite. We've got a big day ahead and lots in store for you. First, we want to acknowledge that the land where the Microsoft campus is situated was traditionally occupied by the Sammamish, the Duwamish, the Snoqualmie, the Suquamish, the Muckleshoot, the Snohomish, the Tulalip, and other Coast Salish peoples since time immemorial, a people that are still here, continuing to honor and bring to light their ancient heritage. My name is Allison Wines. I'm a senior program manager in our developer tools division. I'm an Asian and white female with dark brown hair wearing a red sleeveless top. And I'm Seth Juarez, program manager in the AI platform group. I'm a tall Hispanic male wearing a blue shirt, khaki pants. Powerful stuff there. <laughs> so before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that the land where the GB News studio is situated here in Paddington was traditionally occupied by the Anglo-Saxons, the Romans, the Normans, the Tudors, the Stuarts, Isambard Kingdom Brunel and Paddington Bear. <laughs> Although he was actually from Peru, so he was uh, actually a coloniser himself, wasn't he? I am Andrew Doyle. I'm an average height male with brown hair, blue eyes and a light blue shirt. I have an allergy to linseed and kiwi fruit and my star sign is Sagittarius and I'm rapidly losing the will to live. <laughs> Am I getting this right? Uh, let's just check in with Microsoft again. Hello, everyone. I'm Natalie Godilla. I'm a Caucasian woman with long blonde hair, and I go by she, her. I'm a product marketing lead here at Microsoft and co-host of the podcast Security Unlocked with this guy. Yes, that would be me. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Fillingham. I'm a Caucasian man with glasses and a beard. I go by he, him, and I'm a security evangelist here at Microsoft. I mean, it's like a game of guess who, but <laughs> with, with people who don't understand the rules. On a similar topic, Ministry of Defence officials have been told to state their preferred gender pronouns in meetings, while Marks and Spencer have adopted the exact same policy. It's really great that these two institutions are operating in such close harmony. I look forward to the military's new range of broccoli quiches and to Marks and Spencer's forthcoming expansionist war in the Middle East. <laughs> this isn't just a hostile invasion, this is an MS hostile invasion. <laughs> And it's finally here, the 2021 John Lewis Christmas advert has been released. So this year they've opted for this sort of space-themed rip-off of Stranger Things with a young boy meeting an alien from another planet and showing her what Christmas really means. I mean, it's fairly innocuous stuff. It apparently has ruffled a few feathers, though, online due to the main protagonist being black. And guess what? His family are black as well. Apparently there's been a backlash from people complaining that the advert doesn't represent the average demographic of the UK population. Yes, well, neither did the talking bear and rabbit from their 2015 commercial. <laughs> Everyone was fine with that one. I mean, these people would probably have a cardiac arrest if they ever saw an episode of Desmond's. <laughs> a primary school in Edinburgh has encouraged boys to wear skirts to school. This is sort of getting ridiculous now. You are never going to get Scottish men to wear skirts. <laughs> like, it's just not going to happen, right? Now, this is an odd story. Uh, so a serial burglar with what has been described as an appalling record of theft has been jailed for 10 months. Now, all of the reports are pointing out, as you can see on the image here, here's a dead ringer for Boris Johnson. I mean, there is an uncanny resemblance there. I mean, how embarrassing must that be for him being compared to such a moral degenerate? And I'm guessing Boris wouldn't be too pleased with the comparison either. Of course, there was immediate speculation that this man is one of Boris's illegitimate sons. But that was disproved when it was noted that this career criminal is actually fairly capable. <laughs> this is such an odd story, though. Like, so for one thing, OK, this man is called Jason Watson, which sounds like Boris Johnson's evil doppelganger, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, he may as well be called Joris Bonson. <laughs> Also, when this thief was finally caught, the police found, found over £1,000 stuffed down the front of his trousers. That's very much the Bullingdon Club equivalent of a rolled-up sock. <laughs> of course, this week, COP26, that's been dominating the headlines. <clears throat> 30,000 delegates from 180 countries, over 100 world leaders, all gathered to discuss how to reverse the planet's impending climate catastrophe. And they're keen to make everyone understand what a future post-apocalyptic nightmare world might look like which is why, of course, they chose to hold it in Glasgow. <laughs> 
There were some accusations of hypocrisy for flying over 30,000 people to the event. But look, unless someone invents some kind of magical video conferencing technology that enables people from a variety of locations to chat face to face with little or no carbon cost, this is the best option we have. <laughs> so from Arctic Base Camp, they ferried a 4,000 kilogram iceberg to Scotland in order to demonstrate what? To demonstrate that ice melts, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, can they have just put a couple of ice cubes on top of a radiator or something? <laughs> There's a new production of the musical Into the Woods as well, set to be co-directed by Monty Python star Terry Gilliam. It will no longer be staged at the Old Vic because some members of staff were unhappy with remarks he made several years ago relating to the Me Too movement and other contentious issues. Some members of staff. I mean, should the final veto of whether or not a show goes ahead really be left to the kid with the blue fringe who hands out the Cornettos? <laughs> Are they really so upset that someone disagrees with their opinions that they have to get him fired? I mean, I, I don't want to come across all macho, but perhaps these staff just aren't tough enough for a life in musical theatre. <laughs> And what are they telling them in these job interviews? For this role, you'll mainly be ushering people to their seats, selling confectionery in the interval, oh, and curating all of our content. No experience needed. Oh, and finally, this is incredible. A library book, more than 50 years overdue, has been returned to Cambridge University. The 19th century atlas, borrowed by a Cambridge undergraduate in the 1970s, was left at Trinity Hall Library after a college reunion. The person who returned the book has now been fined 800 shillings. <laughs>